Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I want to discuss some uh, terminology and concepts that are being thrown around. Uh, I'd like to correct some, some false teachings, false accusations, and really clarify uh, the, the, the truth of biblical Christianity. Let's let's first look at the term easy believism. Now I've made videos in the past uh, proclaiming that yes I'm guilty. I believe in easy believism. I believe that the only thing that is required for me to have salvation, to have eternal life, is to simply believe in Jesus Christ for my salvation. Now, the key here is that Jesus Christ is the object of my faith. I'm believing in the person of Jesus Christ. There's nothing else I need to do. There's no religion I must join. There's no religious acts I must perform. Uh, there's no creeds I must memorize and recite. There's simply believing that Jesus Christ has the ability to give me eternal life. Only Jesus has the ability to give me eternal life and that he is faithful to keep the promise to give me eternal life. So I believe in the person of Jesus, in his ability and faithfulness to give me eternal life as he promised. That it's, salvation is really that easy, that simple. It's so easy. Jesus pointed out it's childlike faith. Even a little child can understand. Trust Jesus. Believe Jesus will get you into heaven and he'll do it. Now, there are people who have attacked the term easy believism and uh, also another term that they attack is free grace. Free grace uh, is that uh, God is gracious uh, he doesn't have to give us eternal life. Uh, we, don't earn, we don't deserve it. But God is so gracious and loving and merciful that because he loves us so much, he graciously gives us eternal life as a free gift. Grace is free. Salvation is a free gift we receive when we put our faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ. This is free grace. But... Uh, people are attacking this term and they're calling it cheap grace or extreme grace like we're taking this too far that there that uh, this free grace is uh, is where it's too easy easy believism free grace free grace that's an extreme point of view but the fact is that is the biblical point of view that's biblical Christianity easy believism free grace so, um, a friend of mine, uh, Jack, Brother Jackson, Mecca Wing Zero, uh, he came up with a term uh, to counteract the charge of uh, cheap grace. And he came uh, up with um, easy legalism. In other words, there are people that are saying that you're making salvation too easy, that uh, you know, you've got to repent of your sins and you've, you've got to change your life. There's got to be fruit. They give you a list of things that you must do, a, a list of changes that you must make. Uh, otherwise, you're not truly saved. And so these people are um, rejecting the idea that salvation is easy and grace is free. And they, they, but what they're failing to understand is that the, the legalism, that they are trying to impose on everyone else uh, is really is impossible if we really try to follow the law completely. Jesus pointed this out to us and said that uh, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Uh, following the law, becoming perfect to satisfy God, uh, meeting the standard of God, which is uh, the glory of God. The Bible says that we all fall short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ is God Almighty, he became a man so he could die for our sins. And while he lived, he lived a perfect sinless life. Now, none of us 
have ever been able to do it. Jesus is the only one that's ever been able to live a perfect, sinless life. That is the standard that is set. That's the standard you must meet if you want to get to heaven through personal merit. So if, if you think that something besides faith in Jesus is required, and you're going to impose other requirements or changing of your life to a certain extent, then you're going to have to change yourself so completely that you must be perfect. And uh, But the problem with these people is that they, are, uh, uh, they could charge us with uh, preaching cheap grace, making grace cheap, but what they're doing is really making legalism, the law cheap, cheap law. Because, uh, as Brother Jackson says, it's called easy legalism. In other words, uh, they, they say that you've got to uh, follow the laws and the commandments, and yet they're not able to do it. So they water down the requirements so much to make it easy so that they can say, well, yeah, I've changed. Uh, I've uh, repented of my sins, but they haven't done it. They're being uh, dishonest. Uh, as scripture says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And that's what they're doing. They're deceiving themselves. So the concept of easy believism is biblical. Uh, free grace is biblical. Now there's another concept that uh, um, people have recently brought up and, and they have accused people of uh, preaching a crossless gospel. Crossless gospel. They're saying that a person uh, cannot get saved uh, unless they uh, uh, have certain knowledge and, and believe certain facts. Now, the number of uh, facts they must believe are not necessarily agreed upon by everybody. Uh, some people say you must believe uh, in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And other people say, well, you've got to also believe that he's deity, that in the deity of Christ, that he's God. Uh, and then other people add other things to the list. But they're all... Uh, uh, have a list of facts that you must uh, acknowledge and, and believe in. And this, these people so they say that uh, a person cannot get saved simply by easy believism, by believing in Jesus, believing in the person of Jesus. And uh, they're adding uh, the requirement of learning and uh, assenting to the, all the facts uh, about Jesus. And I will give you an example that shows you that that uh, kind of uh, theology is seriously flawed because I know of a large group of people who believe those facts and yet they are not saved. There are approximately one and a half billion Roman Catholics in the world today. If you ask every Roman Catholic, do you believe that, that Jesus... Uh, uh, died for our sins, was buried, and raised from the dead on the third day. Every Roman Catholic will say, yes, I believe that. Those are facts. So here's a large group of people, large population on the earth today, who do believe that gospel, those facts. And yet if you ask them, uh, do you think you're going to go to heaven? They're, they're going to say, well, I don't know. I hope so. Maybe, I'm trying. I said, well, wh why? why? Why do you think you're going to go to heaven or not? And they say, well, I'm, I'm a good Catholic. I go to church. I go to confession. I do this. I do that. I, 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 I. They're trying to base their salvation upon their own performance, their personal merit. So even though they believe in the gospel facts, uh, they don't have faith in the Savior. They're, they, if I ask them, Oh, on what grounds should you go to heaven? They, are, they should be saying, because Jesus is my Savior, because I, my faith is in Jesus. I'm depending on Jesus, not on myself. And yet they, they never say that. They always try to justify themselves through their own performance. So the idea of uh, thinking that a person can have mental assent to these facts in the gospel and be saved is easily disproven by one and a half billion Roman Catholics. So uh, it, is, it is 
dishonest uh, to uh, use the term crossless gospel. I don't believe any Christian is telling people about Jesus and how to be saved and neglecting to tell them about the cross, the dying for our sins, the resurrection, and much more. Everyone is telling people all these facts and more. So the it's a false accusation. But these people who believe that um, you can be saved if you just believe in those facts, uh, and uh, uh, then they have what Brother Jack Smack would call a faithless gospel. In other words, uh, they're saying that as long as you believe in certain facts, you'll be saved, and they're neglecting the fact that faith is their requirement, faith in the person of Jesus. So, uh, it, it's really a, it's a misplaced faith that they have. They're, they believe that they, if they understand the facts and believe in certain facts, that that will save them, and yet they are missing. It's kind of like straining a gnat and swallowing a camel. It's like uh, um, knowing the letter of the law, but missing the heart of the law. The heart of the law is simply the person of Jesus. Depend on him. Put your faith in him. Jesus Christ must be the object of your faith. You can understand all the facts, get all the facts straight, and uh, write uh, an essay on it, and, and still, you're not saved unless you put your faith in the person of Jesus. So these people who are using this term crossless gospel are being very dishonest, uh, and they are making a serious mistake of thinking that uh, mental assent to the facts of the gospel save you, uh, and neglecting the fact that faith in the person of Jesus is what saves us. Uh, so, Brother Jack Smack got it right. Uh, they are teaching a faithless gospel. And if you think that uh, uh, believing in Jesus for salvation is insufficient, that you must also understand and agree to certain facts, then you, uh, you're going to have to uh, remove, discard, uh, dozens of verses in the scriptures that say otherwise. For example, there I could give you dozens of examples, but let's look at John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you believe that uh, this uh, crossless gospel message, uh, this faithless gospel, uh, and then you would say, have to conclude that this verse can't save you because there's no reference to the cross, there's no reference to the resurrection. So let's remove John 3.16. It's invalid. It has no saving power according to you. Next you're going to have to remove Romans 6.23. It says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now this verse says, The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Is that enough for someone to get saved? If they come to the understanding that God will give them the gift of eternal life through Jesus, put their faith in Jesus, and they get this gift of eternal life, is that insufficient too? Maybe you should remove it from the scriptures, because it certainly can't save anyone according to your doctrine. How about Romans 10.13? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So is that also invalid? If you think that uh, because the cross and the resurrection are not mentioned in that verse, that it has no saving power, you're going to have to just dismiss it and say, a person can't get saved from Romans 10.13. What about Acts 16.30 and 31? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Well, you better just get your eraser out, erase that verse from the scriptures too, because according to you, it has no saving power because it, there's no reference to the uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And then, 
John 6, 28, 29. They asked Jesus, what must we do to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Jesus said is all that's required is to believe in him. So, you're going to have to say Jesus is wrong. The Apostle Paul is wrong. Uh, they are, uh, they've admitted the cross and the resurrection. Therefore, these verses are invalid and can't save anyone. Even though Jesus said that's all that's required, believe in him. Paul says all that's required is to believe in Jesus. And finally, let's look at John 3.36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. This says that whoever, if you believe on the Son, you have everlasting life. If you believe on the Son of God for everlasting life, you get it. Believe the Son of God has the power to give you everlasting life. Believe it. Have confidence in Jesus. Put all your confidence in him. Depend on him completely alone. Now, there's no mention of the cross or the resurrection in these verses here. So according to your theology, none of these verses have the power to save anyone. Uh, and yet, they all say, uh, Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt have everlasting life. So are you prepared to Take dozens of verses in the Bible that are clear-cut salvation messages and say they have no saving power because uh, the person didn't get all the facts. So I'm really sick and tired of the whole concept of a crossless gospel because no Christians are preaching a crossless gospel. Uh, as uh, Brother Joe made a comment on my video, uh, the people who are preaching a crossless gospel are like uh, Muslims or uh, Hindus or other religions of the world, they're preaching crossless gospel because there's no reference to uh, Jesus or the cross or anything. It's another, it's a false religion. But all of Christianity is telling people about the cross and the resurrection. No one omits it. So I'm, I'm really sick and tired of the dishonesty of these charges. But the real problem is uh, you're asking people to put their faith in facts and believe that if they uh, they must get all those facts straight before they can be saved. And uh, you're neglecting the fact that what really saved them is faith in the person of Jesus. Jesus Christ must be the object of our faith. Otherwise, you'll be just like one and a half billion Roman Catholics that do agree in the gospel message, and yet they're not saved because they don't believe in Jesus to save them. They believe they've got to do it themselves. So... I hope this uh, is helpful to you, and I'm going to wait for anybody to answer this and tell me if you're prepared to uh, dismiss and discard or remove these simple salvation verses that tell us that simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Is that a lie? Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.